Hi, how you doing? Justin here today. We are looking at the Jazz Standard Autumn Leaves and we're going to be doing some harmonic analysis. So what that means really is we're going to be looking at the chords and how they kind of function, where the harmony is sitting, whether it's changing key at any point and what the effect of doing that is. And that kind of tells you what scales and arpeggios you might be using over most of the chords when you're improvising. That's kind of the importance of the harmonic analysis. Um, you're going to find this very difficult if you don't understand chords in a key. So if you're not pretty hip with what all of the notes are in the major scales, what keys have what sharps and flats, what the chords are in each of the different keys, and how a chord is constructed. If you're not familiar with that kind of stuff, you're going to find this harmonic analysis pretty difficult. You might struggle through this one, but definitely a lot of the other jazz tunes are going to be uh, whew, you know, way, way over your head. So if you're struggling with that stuff, you know, uh, go and check out my pr uh, Practical Music Theory ebook, which is available on the website, uh, which explains all of that stuff in a really kind of easy to digest kind of a way. So uh, that's really essential theory stuff. And, and getting into harmonic analysis of jazz tunes is, you know, a bit further up the tree. So you need to make sure you've got a solid grounding on those basics before you get started. So uh, uh, let's get to a close up and have a look at our first harmonic analysis tune. Okay, so here we are with the uh, chart for autumn leaves, and uh, I've also done a little uh, tip sheet here, but uh, I want to explain to you the process so you can learn how to make your own tip sheets as well, because I think that's a pretty useful thing when you're first starting getting into a, a bit of analysis. So uh, the first really important thing is to figure out the key, and uh, if you look here between the treble clef and a time signature, you'll find, see normally how many sharps or flats there are, and that will tell you the key. So this uh, has one sharp in it, so uh, hopefully many of you will know already that the key with one sharp is the key of G major. So uh, the first thing that you want to write out probably is, uh, and I've done this on the tip sheet here, is you write out the notes in the G major scale, which are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. That's the notes in the key of G major. And then next of all, we've got the chords in the key of G major, which is G major 7, A minor 7, B minor 7, C major 7, D7, E minor 7 and F sharp minor 7 flat 5, or F sharp di uh, half diminished. Um, so that's the first thing that's really important. Just forget this other stuff that's uh, for the more advanced version I'm going to get through in a little bit. I want to go through, first of all, the most basic uh, look at the harmonic progression. So uh, let's first of all see how many of these chords are in the key and what their role is. So the first chord is an A minor 7, and if we have a look here, oh, we can see that A minor 7 is here, and it's a 2 chord. Now. The reason this two chord thing is important is because it helps us understand what harmonies we might use later on, what, uh, what scales and stuff we might uh, use. I don't want to quite go into that just yet, I just want to deal with the, the harmonic shell first of all. But, uh, so that's why we're going to be writing the two there. Now the next chord is D7, so we have a look over here, and yep, D7, that's, that one there is the five chord. I'm using Roman numerals here, I'd also recommend that you use a pencil. Uh, and we've got G major 7, that's the key, so that's definitely a 1. I'm sure some of you have heard before of this 251. Well, we've got a 251 already in our first jazz tune. Um, next chord is C major 7, so C major 7, remember the triangle is also the shorthand for a major, so that's a 4 chord. And there we've got an F sharp minor 7 flat 5, well, there we go, that's our 7 chord. But there's something quirky about that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Next one we've got a B7. Now if we look over on our chart here, we see here that our 3 chord is a B minor 7, not a B7. All right, so that's a, it's kind of important that it doesn't fit the key anymore. So up until now, everything's been in the key of G. Right? We've been able to use the G major scale to create all of those chords, but now we've reached the first time where it's not in the key. So we could actually write here, this is a 3 chord, so we could write this as a 3-7, okay? If we wanted to kind of get into some harmonic analysis in, in, in one way, it's the, the chord 3, but it's been made into a 7 chord, so we could write 3-7 there. But there's another way of looking at it, which we're going to talk about uh, a little later on. And then we get to E dash, which is shorthand for E minor, which is, of course, the 6 chord. Okay, so uh, there's your first time bar, of course, goes through, there's your repeat sign, you'd repeat back to that, work your way through. Uh, we've got the B7 again, which we just decided was the 3-7 chord, and then the E minor, which was the 6 chord. Okay, I've got my little lines there. Okay, we're into the next section, we've got our F sharp half diminished again, which was our 7 chord, uh, we've got our B7 flat 9. Now, 
a uh, lot of guys get freaked out about the flat nines. They're just extensions, and it does uh, it gives us a few little tips later on. But uh, uh, for right now, just for the harmony, uh, we can just be thinking uh, that there's something odd going on here, which I'm going to explain uh, in a second. But it's essentially a B7, so you could think of it as a 3-7. Um, I'm not going to write that in, actually, because I'm going to change that in a second. Uh, and then we've got our 6 chord. Uh, so just give me a, a, you just have to bear with me for a second while I uh, finish the rest of the tune. I'm going to come back and explain this, uh, what's going on with that. Um, the A minor 7, we already figured this out up here. This was a 2 chord. The D7 was a 5 chord. The G is a 1 chord. Then we've got F sharp, minor 7 flat 5, B7, E minor. Now I'm going to, it's the same thing that's going on here. I'm going to explain that in a second. Um, but now we've got an interesting thing, this E minor 7, A7. Now E minor was in the key, that was a 6 chord, but A7, uh, that shouldn't be in the key, A should be a 2, should be a minor 7. So that's, that doesn't seem right. And then the D minor 7, well that's supposed to be D7. So something, something weird's happened here. We, we need to suss out what's going on there a little bit. Uh, and then we've got back to our F sharp, half diminished, B7, flat 9 to E minor. So um, let's just deal with this little bit here first. Uh, and then we'll come back to that, because this is a major bit and that's a minor bit. Um, basically, when you're doing a harmonic analysis, a dominant seventh chord only occurs once in a key. So if you look at where our chords are here in the key of G, G major 7, A minor 7, B minor 7, C major 7, D7, E minor 7, F sharp, half diminished, the dominant seventh chord only happens once. Okay, and it's a five chord. That's a really big deal, looking out for five chords. Five chords are kind of the they're going to give you a lot of the answers to uh, when you're doing a harmonic analysis. So if you've got an A7 chord, what would be the 1 chord? So if that's a 5, I'm telling you it's a dominant 7th chord, so therefore it's a 5 chord. So what would be the 1 chord? A7 is the 5 chord of what key? So rack your brains a little bit and you'll soon figure out that it's the 5 chord of D. And funnily enough, that's the next chord is D. Forget that it's minor 7, but you can see that's kind of 5 going to 1, okay? Now let's, have, let's assume we're in the key of D for a second, uh, and if we're in the key of D major, the 2 chord would be... Any idea? The second chord in the key of D major would be E minor 7. Wait, so that would actually be a 2. Oh, that looks familiar. 2, 5, 1. People are always saying that happens a lot in jazz. Well, here's, we've already had a big example up here, and we've got another one going on here as well. And now we've got another D minor 7, G7. Okay, but G should be G major 7 in the key of G. So what's going on with that? So this, this is probably a 5 chord as well. So if G7 is the 5 chord, we'd probably be going to what? What's the, the 1 in the key of G7? G7 is the 5 chord of what key? Anyone who's thinking C major, you were right. But, well, it doesn't go to a C major though. This time it goes somewhere else. But it's still, it's still a 5 chord of C. It's just not finishing there. But let's assume we were in C for a second. The 2 chord would be, you guessed it, D. Now this kind of sequence in jazz where we've got 2, 5, and then the 1 is actually a minor chord, which is the, the 2, 5 of another key, is a really, really common kind of movement in jazz. Okay? So both of these chords are actually... This, this little section here, just this little bar, this is in the key of D major. And this bar here, this is in the key of C major. Okay, but the overall song is in the key of G major. So you can start to see, get an idea of these key changes in jazz. And this is a relatively simple one. But it's really important that you get used to the idea of looking out for your five chords. So you can see that if you don't understand all your keys, you're going to have a bit of problem trying to do a harmonic analysis if you can't tell straight away what your five chords are. Okay, so you make sure you've got to know your chords in your keys. And uh, knowing it, to learn to recognize your five chords is a kind of a big deal as well. Um, a little hint for you, if you take the root note of that, so that's A7, and you look at that on the thickest string of the guitar, on the sixth string, whatever note is on the fifth string on the same fret will be your one chord. So if you, you know, A7 is uh, 
uh, or the note A rather, would be the fifth fret of the thicker string. And if you look at the fifth fret on the fifth string, that would be the note D. If you're looking at the note G, that would, and that is the five chord, that would be the third fret of the sixth string. And you look at the uh, third fret of the fifth string, it would give you the note C, which would be the one. So it's just a handy way of figuring out your five to one uh, using the guitar neck, because a lot of people know the notes better on the guitar neck than uh, anything else. Now, uh, We've got an interesting little thing here. I said I'd come back to it here, this uh, B7 flat 9 and a half diminished thing. We need to look at this a little bit closer because uh, the B7 flat 9 doesn't really fit here very well. If We can call it a 3 dominant 7 if we want, but it's not really the truth. And uh, what's going on here is this is actually what's called a minor 2-5. So this is a minor 2-5-1 in the key of E minor. So what I've done here is I've written out here the chords in the key of E, harmonic minor. Now, some of you guys are likely to get a bit confused about the different types of minor chords. I've got a lesson on the website called Demystify the Minor Scales, which will give you a little funny story which explains how they work. But basically, the harmonic minor deals with making harmony. And the reason that we want to change the scale a little bit is to get our B7 chord here, because we like dominant seventh chords on the five. Okay? And uh, this will go five, one. And you can see there would be the two. So these are the chords in the key. If you don't understand how to do that, again, practical music theory doesn't cover the minor chords, but it explains how to work out what the chords are. Um, so in the key of E harmonic minor, when you work out what the chords are in that key, you get a dominant seventh chord as the five chord, you get a minor seven flat five chord as the two chord, and the straight minor as the one chord. Okay? So this is only used, we don't tend to use that as a scale a whole lot. Um, there's other kind of choices for that, but... Uh, you know, generally the harmonic minor scale is used for creating harmonies. So uh, that's what's going on here. Even though this is a chord seven, and you could play the G major scale over it, actually this is a two, five, one in E minor. Okay? And the correct scale to play over that would be this E harmonic minor scale. Okay? It's kind of a big deal that you kind of get used to that, that that, uh, that would be the right scale to use over this kind of minor 2-5. We've also got a minor 2-5 up here, the F sharp half diminished, B7 to E minor. We've got it a few times, F sharp half diminished, B7 flat 9 to E minor, right? It's occurring a few times. The correct scale would be this harmonic minor scale. However, I would recommend if you're getting into jazz for the first time that you would just stick to mucking around in G major and over the B7 chord play a B7 arpeggio, right? That's, you know, a lot of other jazz teachers would kill me for saying that, but I'm telling you it's an easier way of looking at it when you're first going to get going on it, uh, just to be able to play that one scale, the G major scale, through the whole thing, but then rip into a bit of B7 over that one chord. Um, really a good, a, a better approach, um, and the way that I normally teach lead guitar, jazz lead guitar, is to play out of arpeggios the whole way. So you learn the arpe an arpeggio for each chord, and you would play an arpeggio for, for each one, and leave scale for a little later on. But uh, I wanted to explain a couple of other things. So we looked at this harmonic minor scale that gives us our 2-5-1. If you're a bit confused about that, don't worry about it too much at the beginning. Uh, you know, I found it a little bit baffling at first, this idea of changing keys and stuff, but it, it just takes a little bit of time. Um, I just wanted to explain here, there's a little run here where it's gone B, C sharp, D sharp, and the C sharp doesn't fit really, because if we look at our E harmonic minor, we've got a regular C, not a C sharp which is, uh, might throw a little, you know, you know, get a little bit curious as to why they would do that. Um, and the reason is that melodically, if you go from C to D sharp, this interval here is a tone and a half, and it sounds a little bit weird. It's a bit of a big jump to go from C to D sharp. It tends to sound a little bit Eastern, uh, which is not normally what you want in a kind of a regular tune. So uh, what the people tend to use is this thing called the melodic minor, right? The the the, the minor that you use for making scale, uh, making scales, for making melodies. Okay, this is the melody scale. Okay, and you'll see that the only difference between the harmonic minor and the melodic minor is the inclusion of this note C sharp, which is the note that gets used here. So you can see there's a kind of a real world example of uh, how these different scales come about. The fact that we've got the harmonic minor to get our B7 
And uh, particularly our B7 flat 9, because a flat 9 above B7 is the note C. So that's kind of where we're... Uh, this, when we're, we're looking at this kind of harmony here, it's really it's saying we want to be using the E harmonic minor scale here, not the E melodic minor scale. That's kind of what it's saying. You do get sometimes people uh, saying that you should use the half whole diminished scale. Now this is not for beginners, right? This is going into uh, any guys that are a, a bit more serious about jazz um, and uh, getting into their harmony. Uh, I'm sure they've read that the seven flat nine should take the diminished, the half whole diminished scale. Um, and it does fit, like you've got the root, the third, the fifth, the flat seven, and the flat nine. Those notes are found in the half whole diminished scale. But what you do get that I don't like about it is this note here, the G sharp. Because the note E minor, the note that makes an E and E minor is the note G. And we're also in the key of G. So G is a kind of a strong tone here. So starting to throw around a G sharp note, I think, is a bit of a heinous idea. I don't like the sound of it at all. Um, there are some people that do it, and I've done transcriptions where guys have been using this scale over in that particular position. But I personally don't like the sound of it. So that's up, it's up to you. It's just another option. I thought, you know, I know it's a common thing to get analyzed uh, in this tune to have this half hole diminished over for that particular chord, but uh, I don't really, I'm not feeling that. I think it's much better to be playing out of the uh, harmonic minor scale, which gives you the B7 and the flat 9, and it, it keeps your note G in there, which kind of, uh, I think it sounds nicer melodically, actually, and uh, especially where it's got the flat 9, uh, that rules out the melodic minor as well. So if you can't use that and you can't use that, you're, you're stuck there with the uh, harmonic minor, I think. And that tends to be the one that sounds best, in my opinion, because remember, Really, really important here. I've just done a whole lot of scribbling and talking about how the, all of this stuff's working, but it's all about understanding why it sounds good. Okay, it's all about it sounding good. It's really important that you don't get too bogged down into what the theory says you can and can't do, because theory is just a little kind of tool for explaining why things sound good, not a reason to play bad stuff. So I've met lots of students over the years that say, well, the theory says that over a B7 flat 9 you can play the half whole diminished scale. And I'm like, well, fine, the theory says that, but if it doesn't sound good, then there's no point in doing it because the guys in the audience aren't going to be going, wow, that guy's using his half whole diminished scale, he really knows what he's on about, because they're just going to be going, oh, that doesn't sound very good. So really, make sure you remember that. It's a really, really important kind of a lesson is that, uh, you know, it's, it's all about what it sounds like, not just about the theory. So, uh, hmm, hope you haven't got too bad a headache. Well, there you have it. That's your first bit of harmonic analysis. I hope it wasn't too painful. Although saying that, it's kind of bound to be a little bit of a struggle if this stuff is new to you. I remember still the first few times I was trying to learn tunes like this and understand the, the harmony. I found it really, really confusing, you know, and uh, especially in this kind of video context, it's kind of difficult to learn this stuff because I can't keep checking up with you to see how much you're getting and how much you're not. So really for, for somebody who's just getting into harmonic analysis, I'd be really happy if you just understand like the idea of uh, all of those chords being like the one chord and the two chord and the five chord and then oh there's this other chord which is a five chord of a minor key if you can get that much that would be great for more advanced kind of guys you want to start exploring this idea of using the half whole diminished and looking at the different uh, minor scale possibilities and uh, letting your ear decide which one you think is the right one to be choosing in this song um, you know it is like I, I, you know, I can't emphasize strongly enough how important it is that you listen to this stuff, that it's all about listening and, and just studying lots of theory is, is kind of a bad idea because you'll let, you kind of, your brain will talk your in ear into thinking things are working when they're not. You know, you've really got to use your ear first and let your ear decide what it, you know, what's sounding good and what isn't. So uh, that's, that's kind of a big deal. So uh, in future lessons, I'm going to be looking at, uh, you know, using arpeggios over this, walking bass and comping idea substitutions. I, I will be coming and revisiting this song a few times to explore some other ideas. But as well, as we progress through other jazz standards and you start to see these two five ones and some substitutions and little mini modulations, as you see them more often they'll become more familiar and it'll become less painful. But I uh, do expect at the beginning for this stuff to be uh, a little bit tricky. Most, I, you know, I found it really difficult. Uh, most everyone I've ever taught has found it at least mildly tricky, if not absolutely ridiculously impossible. So, uh, you know, just bear with it, take it slow, do it a few times, you know, write out the chords to the keys. You know, if you're not familiar with that, that's something that you're definitely going to have to spend a bit of time on is, uh, you know, going through and making sure that 
you know the, the notes and the chords in all of your different keys that you want to be able to access that real quick. If you haven't got it real quick, get yourself one of those little charts like I've got in Practical Music Theory where it's all written out for you and use it as a reference tool until you've got to know it uh, good enough to do it from memory. So uh, I hope you have fun with that and that I haven't scared you off so much that you're going to uh, skip over the, the harmonic analysis video next time, but you know, it is going to take a few for you to get it. Right, so uh, I'm hoping that you'll be joining me for the next few, and uh, I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.